So anyway, so first of all, uh, I would like to thank, I think, Damodar Redigar for inviting me to this uh, workshop, okay? And of course, the college, you know, I think just we went to Ishwara College you know, for inviting me to this uh, workshop. And now, of course, I think uh, Professor Damodar Redigar has given a nice introduction about me. So as you can see, you see my primary area of uh, research is earthquake engineering and, uh, you know, I, is hazard analysis, steel and other things, and dynamics and other random vibrations. I routinely do these type of works. But generally what happens is, uh, you know, if you, uh, you know, continuing the same work, say, sometimes, you know, we become monotonous. So here and now and when, uh, you know, when it is, uh, whenever things come, so we take some uh, challenging projects, actually. Challenging means, uh, you know, which are out of the box for me, okay? So if I have not worked in a new topic, say, so we enter that, uh, you know, some projects and now one here we take so that, uh, you know, we also will learn so many things from this uh, projects. Okay. So today's lecture, uh, you know, so as already, of course, it is on repair and rehabilitation of structures. So what I will be doing is, uh, you know, I will be discussing about uh, some important projects actually, okay, which we have done, uh, you know, I think three or four years back. One is this vulnerability and, uh, you know, this uh, HVRE, this risk analysis of all Orissa, you know, the government health facilities. That is, uh, you know, they, we will see those things. And then, of course, another in, uh, challenging projects which we have done in retrofitting, repair, rehabilitation of this uh, Kedarnath Temple, actually, which was damaged due to floods in uh, 2014, okay? And, uh, you know, so this is what our uh, today's plan. And uh, the, what I will be doing is, uh, first I will be talking about the repair, uh, you know, the techniques actually, which are widely used. And of course, the techniques, what we have used in our uh, projects, okay? And then I will show you some details, what we have done for various uh, health uh, facilities. Essentially, I will be discussing about HVRA, we say, okay? So the hazard vulnerability risk, uh, you know, analysis kind of thing. So where we will be giving some kind of scores, you know, which building has to be immediately it should be repaired and which uh, hospital should be taken as a priority so that uh, you know uh, these results i will be showing and finally if there is times i will also show some uh, details about uh, kedarnath temple about the studies and whatever we have done uh, you know, in this uh, project okay and as of course you know as already i told you my primary interest is not in the repair and rehabilitation but uh, you know so for these projects, say, so since, uh, you know, I have to uh, learn and then we have to do this work. So I will be discussing, uh, you know, so the whatever repair techniques or whatever I will be talking, say, so they all will be linked to essentially these two projects itself, okay? So now and, uh, you know, whatever repair techniques, uh, whatever I'm going to show you, say, so I will be referring these two, you know, these are textbook, okay? The, all the material I have to put, uh, you know, picked from this textbook. So this textbook is excellent uh, textbook actually. If any of you wants to know about concrete repair and maintenance, say. So this textbook is the almost it is the best actual. And it is a very, very unique uh, textbook. You know, it is not like other textbooks means a lot of details of text, you know, the equations and methodology, everything will be described. But this textbook is something, you know, he has where he has just explained the details through some sketches, you know, nice figures and others he has made up. And the text is very little. So for a starting person, say, to, if you want to understand the concept of repair and maintenance, I think this book is the best book actually, okay? and most widely used book in repair and rehabilitation also. So I suggest all of you, whoever is interested, say, to take this, uh, to buy this book, I think soft copy or hard copy, you can buy it and you can go through, you will get excellent idea about, uh, you know, the concrete repair and uh, maintenance, okay? Then of course, I have also borrowed, so I like, you see, from this uh, code ACI committee 562, you know, the code requirements for evaluation, repair and rehabilitation say. So this commentary also have borrowed in my lectures itself. Okay, so these two have been, I uh, have used. So now before uh, going into the, this one, so one should understand the difference between uh, repair and, uh, you know, the new construction actually. So when I took up this project, so this Varissa, you know, that, uh, that hospital buildings, uh, this Kedarnath, uh, this building says. So generally in our undergraduate or postgraduate, we study analysis, then the design courses, so like steel design, concrete design, and we do some advanced pre-stressed, you know, and advanced RCC design, you know, advanced analysis. We do all these things basically. So now when I undertook this project also, I was under the impression that whatever I have studied in my UG and PG, you know, I can directly, you know, implement and I can do the repair basically. But, uh, you know, when we started this, you know, what we understand is the repair and the new construction. So they are entirely, you know, different basically, okay? They are not the same. 
you, you may have a degree, you would have done the courses of RCC design, steel design, pre-stressed, advanced, this one, but still to do repair, you know, that is not sufficient actually, okay? So repair is entirely a different uh, ball game, okay? So that's what I, I understood when we started this uh, project. So the reason is a new construction. So when we talk about new construction, okay? So somewhere like if you want to construct a new building, say steel or RCC or whatever. So this is very <laughs> You will be given the set of loads and you have to simply you know, find out uh, time and so i think you know so this is a you know the new construction say okay so given the loads will be given to you you can find out the deflections you know you can find out the cross section dimensions and it is very easy so your new construction is something like what we call as you know, a forward problem actually okay so forward, I mean to say that I will give you the load and you tell the deflection, cross-section dimensions and others. But when repair comes to say, repair is something like, uh, you know, it is already constructed. So I think one second. I think somebody, uh, uh, yes, I think they have muted there. This one. Okay. So now repair is basically, you know, it is like, you know, an inverse problem, we say, okay. So like, some, you know, we don't know the, you know, we have something like a crack or, uh, you know, we have seen some distress or whatever in the structure. So now, uh, you know, we have to go back basically, you know, whether that uh, crack or whatever you are seeing, so that has come from, uh, you know, the external, that it has, whether it has come from the design deficiency or it has come from the external forces or some exposure thing, you know, so it is basically inverse kind of a problem. So you know the effect, now you have to go back and find out the cause and then you have to do, suggest you see a strategy also. So uh, new construction is something like, you know, you know the loads, it is like a forward problem, whereas re this repair is essentially, you know, it is something like inverse uh, kind of a problem itself. And another most important thing is new construction, say, there are no constraints for you. You can choose whatever material you like, you can do whatever you like because the structure is not yet uh, constructed. But when you do the repair say, so now we will be having a lot of constraints. Already the structure would have been constructed, you know, you don't have much freedom, you know, to do whatever uh, you like. So, so many constraints will come into picture basically. And of course the repair works because it's the inverse problem and there is nothing, and the, the difference between forward and inverse problems is, so forward problem means you will have only one solution maybe you can find out. But in inverse problems, there could be multiple uh, solutions are possible, okay? So these repair works, that's why, you know, they are very challenging compared to the new construction work, you know, and of course, you know, you don't have free space available, these are another thing, and you have to work with the existing structure actually, okay? And here also, suppose if you are doing for heritage structures, say, say like, for example, RCC or some, uh, you know, small structure, maybe, you know, you can demolish or you can put uh, some steel and then, you know, you can strengthen it and you can do it. Suppose if it's a heritage building, so like, you know, the Kedarnath temple or something, you know, they will not allow you, you know, if you put a steel beam, steel columns inside, because, you know, the Agama Shastras, they say steel should not be used in the construction. So you have to go with uh, stones itself, you know, so it becomes a big uh, challenge, you know, the existing structure itself. And, and the other thing is, you know, the aesthetics will become important, the architecture becomes important. Then another most important thing is you have to deliver as fast as possible also. See, like, for example, the hospital building, say, you can't uh, close the hospital building for, you know, three to five months, you know, saying that repair is going on, you know, because it is impossible. Because hospital is a very, you know, the important structure. And even Kedarnath Temple, so when you're doing this project also, because they have to open for the devotees, you know. So when the work was going on, so devotees used to come to the temple and then, you know, we used to have this type of, you know, the constraints that to do the test to say, you know, when the devotees are not there only, you know, at the night times, we have to do the test also. So there are a lot of constraints, a lot of, uh, you know, inverse, uh, you know, these problems are there when you try to do this uh, repair work. So please understand, so construction and repair work are entirely different. So we may have a B.Tech degree or M.Tech, but until the repair is entirely different uh, ball game actually, okay? So it requires a lot of expertise and, you know, there are a lot of NDT techniques are there. So it is a very difficult thing. So you have to do, you know, you have to study a lot. You have to do these courses and then only, you know, you will be able to do, take, undertake this type of uh, repair work. So this is what we say, why repair uh, comes actually, why we have to do this repair or rehabilitation or whatever, these, you know, strengthening and other things we have to do. So because once you have constructed the structure, say, so generally, you know, in our structural design, 
what our main idea is the safety of the structure okay the safety of the structure in uh, future basically so this is the most important uh, you know the design objective so in future okay so this this word uh, generally we say structural safety so but when you are designing a new building so you have to talk about future or whatever repair strategy you are doing say it has to be safe in the next 50 years or 100 years or whatever so future is very you know dangerous thing because a lot of uncertainties will be there okay so anyway so once you have constructed any structure say so the structure will be you know it will be due to exposure basically okay so it will be exposed to sunlight the temperature moisture content and then service conditions say like you see the corrosion okay so which i will uh, discuss also so corrosion these kind of things maybe you know chloride content or carbonation then you will be having the temperature uh, difference and you have these uh, acid attacks or chemical attacks say some aggressive chemicals basically you know so the structure also will be subject to these things then of course the loading also will come into picture okay so like you know and here we have a huge uh, problem see if you take a structure which was constructed 30 40 years back say and then you want to repair the structure say so the code what they would have used will be different and the code right now code will be entirely different may the value the design values or the loads may have been upgraded or they would have increased like in seismic zone map if you see uh, like a building is there in zone 2 say previously now our new seismic zone map comes so it may go to zone 3 or zone 4 actually so then how do we you know, the loads itself will be different so how do we handle these issues is a big issue actually then of course the design deficiencies will be obviously will be there uh, you know and there will be some design like some mistakes calculations or whatever can be there then material interactions say how the materials interact basically that is also a big deal then we have construction deficiencies that is a poor workmanship or whatever so all these conditions are there so and finally what happens is the structure will start uh, disintegrating spalling cracking leakage wear deflection settlement so all these things you observe basically so now the repair is it is something like you know you know these uh, effects basically so by looking at the settlement deflection wear and this one now you have to find out the cause whether it has come due to construction deficiency whether it is due to metal interaction whether this thing are loads or service conditions or exposure conditions so this has to be established before you take any repair methodology so you can see multiple uh, you know the solutions are there so whenever you see a cracks it can be due to this or this or this so so many things will come into picture basically and uh, that's what you see so now whenever you do a repair methodology so okay so what question generally what we try to do is so if you want undertaking any repairs say so will the root cause okay so what is the main cause okay will be addressed at that okay so like for example i showed you the causes are uh, exposure service service so many things are there so whether the root cause if the you know the cracking or spalling or service loads so whether you will be able to handle this or not actually okay this is the most important thing because if you don't address the main root cause then this you may have to do once again you know several repairs also will come into this one okay then compatibility this is also the most important uh, thing because the concrete or whatever so the material would have been 30 years old and now if we are putting new concrete so how these two new material the old material how they interact with each other so that is also a very big uh, you know issue so this also has to be ensured the compatibility then another most important thing is if you have already done the repair say now uh, once again uh, getting repair every one year you know then more and more money you followed it will be required so this also so you should do the repair such that you know the frequent maintenance may not be required also and of course safety durability cost effectiveness aesthetics and all others comes into picture so these are some of the questions we ask you know, whenever uh, you have to repair any building say you know what are they? and of course you may have some more questions also but these are the main things you know we ask uh, before we undertake this uh, repair strategy so now and uh, most of the things generally you know if you see the construction industry if this one so most of the things what is happening is you know many repairs say they are getting uh, you know the failure basically so the failure of the concrete structure the original structure is one failure but generally after it has been repaired say still uh, structures are uh, you know the failure is happening that is a failure of the repair basically that's what i mean to say here so which was undertaken on the structure side this itself is failing in most of the cases itself and if you look at the statistics which are coming from the construction industry what they tell us is 60% of repair failures you know they come due to incorrect diagnosis actually so like for example uh, you know this is a column say so the reinforcement is being exposed so what they have done is simply they have uh, put up a cover actually without uh, understanding properly 
the corrosion in this uh, rods that has not been addressed in uh, you know they have not the diagnosis has not been done properly so whenever a bar is exposed generally you know we just cover it by some kind of it is a concrete system so now if you don't arrest this uh, So now the problem, what happens here is uh, this. Uh, yeah. So now if you don't address this corrosion say, and then you know incorrect diagnosis, if you do once again, uh, you know you will see this. Uh, yeah. So that's what we say. So that's what we call as. Uh, so I have muted her. Okay. So now the what happens here is uh, you know so the 16% of the repair failures so basically they do the incorrect uh, diagnosis okay so if you don't uh, diagnose the correct problem say then the 16 you know that you can have a, your repair itself may fail then 38% say okay these repairs uh, you know due to inappropriate design of the repair work then 15% say are inappropriate choice of materials then 19% you know poor workmanship is say. Then of course other uh, factors are there. So these are some of the you know some statistics which comes from the uh, construction industry. Okay. Uh, so now so these so now if you want to do the effective repair strategies, say, so you have to understand what is the cause. As already I told you, this repair is an inverse problem. You know, so we know the effects actually. Okay. So now we know the effects. So if you see any structures, so there may be a leakage, settlement deflection where spalling or something so now it is an inverse problem so now uh, if you want to design a repair strategy the first thing is you should be able to identify the cause actual okay so this cause may be due to you know the design or materials or construction overloading chemical spill earthquake or fire some other loads actually okay? erosion corrosion freeze this one alkali sulfate attack so the cause has to be found out you know then only if you know the exact cause so we can design a perfect uh, you know the repair strategy that's what we said. So, if you're developing uh, you know, effective repair strategy, it requires understanding of what causes the undesirable uh, behavior. So, this is the most important thing. That's why we call this as an inverse problem, actually. So, if you can understand the causes, obviously, you know, you can design a return repair strategy which can handle this effect as well as the cause and, of course, the long lasting uh, repair itself. So, that's what we said. The most important thing, like in Orissa, when we did this one, as already I told you. So, so many causes are there actually, okay. So, now when we did this, undertook this project of Orissa, these hospital buildings, you know, the most important thing, what we found out was this uh, corrosion actually. So, this is a major thing which is creating, you know, the problem in Orissa actually, okay. So, you can see this uh, corrosion, uh, you know, that I have just picked up from uh, Google. So, you can see the corrosion is, uh, you know, you can see many of the bars in the, in the structures are very old structures, so say. And if they are near to the sea coast or whatever, this is chloride corrosion, we said. Okay, so you can see these bars have been corroded uh, severely in Orissa. Uh, and you can see the hospital, you know, you can see the bars got corroded or whatever. So this was our uh, the most important challenge in you know, how to address this corrosion you see, in this uh, building. So you can see in your uh, you know places also many multi-story buildings. So you can see the bars getting corroded. Uh, you know, they will be exposed, and then you know this is a major problem. Even in our IAT, say, because Chennai is also very close to the sea coast, we will have this chloride induced, uh, you know, this corrosion itself. Even in our apartments, in our campus, also, say, if you can see the structures which are very old, you will see these type of uh, problems itself. Okay. And this, anyway, most of you may be knowing. See, why corrosion, uh, you know, happens actually. Okay. So, you all know, you know, this concrete, say, it's basically, it is a highly alkaline uh, you know, material. And the pH values, which says acid or this one, so concrete is uh, you know, between 12 to 13 actually. So this is the range where our uh, you know, the concrete has, the newly produced concrete. So now when, the, when this pH value is here, so the embedded whatever steel is you know, the embedded inside the concrete, it is basically protected from uh, corrosion by some invisible uh, you know, clip that is a bonding to the reinforcing uh, bar surface. So this gets developed 
and uh, you know so there will be no corrosion basically so this protects the bar and you know, it will be fine but then why the corrosion happens when this uh, passivating film it gets disrupted and obviously you know the corrosion takes place actually so you can see in the ordinary you know in the fresh concrete so corrosion is not a big issue but slowly when this uh, you know ph value or even the passive film gets destroyed say, automatically you know the corrosion happens so this may be so you may know these uh, things also say like for example uh, to have a corrosion say okay so it goes into metallurgy okay so the metallurgy people uh, you know so they are more experts you know because they work with the metals and other things also so they say corrosion means you should have three things you know one is anode then you should have a cathode and then electrolyte actually so this electrolyte is your con concrete whatever is there so surrounding it, it it will be like you know the electrolyte kind of thing and your uh, this reinforcement rod say it will provide anode as well as uh, cathode actually okay so when corrosion starts electric current say it flows from cathode and anode and reaction results you know and then in the metal volume will get increased basically so you know these chemical reactions are there so iron uh, is oxidized into poh twice and then you know uh, finally you will see this uh, rust actually okay so this is what it happens and of course for this uh, corrosion to take place uh, water and oxygen are also required you know for this uh, corrosion action and of course as already i mentioned in good quality concrete so the corrosion rate will be very slow because you know the ph value will be between 12 to 13 and uh, as already i told you the accelerate this corrosion happens at the ph value is lower basically so the ph value decreases so automatically you know the corrosion rate you can see in the uh, previous figure so you can see once the corrosion rate uh, once the ph value gets decreased the corrosion rate automatically you know increases basically okay so this is the most uh, important thing or if there are any aggressive chemicals is acid attacks or whatever if you are having dissimilar metals are there then also the corrosion rate automatically increases and of course some stray currents and uh, you know, this also is one of the reason why the corrosion happens actually. so these are the corrosion uh, you know causing this one see oxygen water uh, you know the uneven chemical this one environments that lower the ph the chlorides and other things and of course these are the corrosion inhibitors are the high quality concrete the ph level is high and of course because the ph level is high it protects the steel surface from uh, corrosion okay and the most important thing in corrosion is uh, the most thing is once the steel rod gets uh, corroded so rust forms so this volume you know the expands so volume expansion happens so it is something like you know one cup of uh, steel if you have say is equal to you know six cups basically you know of rust so this huge uh, you know the volume you know it expands inside actually so what happens is when the huge you know the bar the volume gets expanded due to corrosion say so this gives rise to you know that the surrounding concrete or whatever the huge uh, pressure will be built up inside so this pressure what happens is the surrounding concrete so it starts uh, cracking itself and the pressure will be so strong you can see this is a rock pillar actually somewhere in croatia or whatever so you can see these cracks here so the whole rock got uh, cracked basically so the reason what they found out was you know when they did all kinds of non destructive testing they found out was there was one iron bar uh, iron or something was inside this uh, you know this rock pillar and because this got rusted say and this volume increased by six times of this this one so what happened was you know this pushed a huge pressure was there and the rock itself gets uh, got cracked actually okay so this is a very high strength rock this also gets uh, you know the crack due to corrosion itself so please remember so one cup of steel is something like you know, six cups of uh, you know the rust itself so that much huge volume expansion you can see when there is a corrosion so this is a main uh, headache actually so due to this one automatically you know this is spalling delamination and all those things happens and of course uh, you know you can uh, see this like you see the why uh, and this depends on uh, you know i'm sorry and this depends on how much the cra you know, cracks in concrete and other it depends on of course the concrete tensile strength quality of the concrete cover but it depends on the bond diameter and then percentage of corrosion by weight of the reinforcing bar so there are some uh, you know tables given in the course also suppose if you take a cover to bar diameter ratio is uh, 7 actual so the percentage corrosion to cause cracking in the concrete is you know the 4% so 4% corrosion is required it will be sufficient to cause the concrete this one suppose if cover to depth ratio say the cover depth is very small you know like a 3 only very small so 1% of corrosion itself is sufficient to crack the uh, concrete itself so that because of one cup is six this one so that causes pressure and finally you know you will see these type of cracks on the concrete and of course not only the you know you are uh, the rust and then cracks in the concrete 
but the capacity say of your slab or a beam wherever this one so that also gets uh, decreased so like you see the you know if you have flexible uh, beams say if the bars got corroded you know they, they like 1.5 percent of corrosion has happened say so the ultimate load capacity uh, you know, it begins to fall and at 4.5% corrosion, ultimate load was reduced by 12% actually. So these are some member sets. So there is a 4.5% itself, the load gets, uh, load capacity will be reduced by 12%, you know. And of course, you will have, see the steel, you know, the loss of uh, section of this bar also. And finally, the load capacity gets uh, decreased. Actually. And if it is a compressive uh, members, you know, of course, cracking, spalling of course it reduces effective cross section and thereby obviously you know the compressive load capacity also gets uh, reduced so the main issue of corrosion is the it also it the cracks in the concrete delamination all those things you will observe and the uh, capacity so the load carrying capacity also gets reduced due to this uh, corrosion and this is a corrosion map of india you know you can get it in google the construction industry is there so what is there? You can see where the corrosion is higher. Actually, you can see the most of the corrosion. So the maximum corrosion you will see in the sea coast. You can see it is uh, you know this way. Okay, that is the Bay of Bengal, you know the Arabian Sea, and of course the Indian Ocean. So this red color indicates extremely severe uh, corrosion. Now slowly, you know, as you go far away from the sea coast, to say so severe, then moderate, mild, and then you see you will have negligible, uh, you know, the corrosion in this side actually. Okay. So everywhere, the whole of India say the sea coast is, uh, you know, there is a line, extreme corrosion, there is a chance of extreme corrosion. But as you go far away from the sea coast, say corrosion can happen, but it will be mild or moderate or something, it comes up. Okay. So now this is essentially for the chloride uh, kind of corrosion. But of course, uh, you know, even in the places which you are far away from the coast, say if it is a chemical plant and you can manufacture some kind of a chemical industry or maybe some acid or something, corrosion can still uh, happen also. And of course, when there are no chlorides, so, say, so like for example, the Delhi or internal, uh, you know, the interior of India. So what happens is the, here at the sea coast, you will have chloride corrosion. So chloride is the main uh, culprit, you know, which causes the corrosion and humidity and other things also. Now, when in the interior, so chloride corrosion, you will not see the most corrosion is due to carbonation. Right? There's a carbon dioxide which gets released in the air. So that happens essentially, you know, in the cities, a huge traffic nowadays we are seeing. So the carbon dioxide say so that also causes some kind of uh, you know, the corrosion so these are so please remember so the entire sea coast of india say is more prone to corrosion itself and you can see the northeast also you know, there is a severe corrosion there is a chance for severe corrosion and our chennai say it comes under extreme corrosion and you will see a lot of buildings and others also you know, this is chloride induced corrosion is where you can see these things in uh, this uh, area and of course varissa you know we have seen all the chloride induced uh, corrosion so this is what happens basically okay so that once the the chlorides are there so when they're close to the sea coast or whatever so these chlorides you know they start the moisture and others comes you know they start penetrating your uh, concrete actually you can see so this is a chloride and uh, there is a moisture and oxygen in uh, you know these are also available so, so they slide so slowly you know they penetrate into the concrete this one and they will attack your uh, steel bar actually and okay? they will create this uh, you know the corrosion of the steel bar so it depends the penetration, how much time it takes. So if I'm constructing a new building, how much penetration rate time? This so it depends on amount of chlorides actually coming into contact with concrete, then permeability, then amount of the moisture present. So these are the three things which governs, you know, how much time it takes for the bar to get corroded in the, you know, the when the chlorides are present in the, you know, when the when the sea coast or in the, at your place itself. Yeah? So what happens is finally they enter this one and uh, they start corroding the bar and you can see this is a delamination spall and you can see a lot of cracks which comes in the concrete and while further you don't take any you know repair strategy or whatever say you will see finally you know corrosion delamination spalling other things you say so some studies uh, people have done so they start that if there is 8000 ppm of chloride say the ph value is a 13.2 that is a concrete this one so 8,000 ppm chlorides are required to initiate corrosion. But if the pH is lower to 11.6, say, so 71 ppm itself is sufficient, actually, you can see. So from 8,000, we are going to 71, but here it was 13.2, and this is 11.6, actually. So the pH value is reduced, you say, automatically, you know, your corrosion, uh, you know, that is very little chlorides are itself are sufficient to initiate, uh, you know, the corrosion itself. And the problem in here is carbonation is also causes corrosion. Carbonation, what happens is it reduces the pH value of the uh, concrete basically. So when the pH value reduces, automatically there are chloride also are there. Say. 
then you know there is a chance of you know very fast uh, you know the corrosion process happening like the penetration time will be high and you will see this uh, corrosion very severe uh, you know this corrosion also in our buildings and these are some tolerable uh, crack widths so okay, the code gives actually so generally you know if you are having water retaining the tolerable crack width is you can't avoid 100% and if it is a dry air protective membrane so this happens so whenever there is a construction joints or some small cracks present already in your structure then what happens is you know the chlorides are there sir so they penetrate through these small small cracks of these expansion joints wherever there are openings and slowly you know they penetrate inside and corrode the bar and then uh, you know this uh, damage your uh, structure itself the spalling the concrete may get spot delamination may happen also and of course is a one more thing is a carbonation actually okay so as already i told you the carbon dioxide say okay so this also is a main uh, reason it's a carbonation they said which we are seeing right now at many places actually so what carbon dioxide you know what it does is you know it will so what happens is you know it penetrates the concrete actually okay and what it does is it reduces the ph value and this is a chemical reaction they say so metallurgy people you know so they have done like co2 plus h2o in the chemistry calcium carbonate get comes and the ph value say automatically you know it reduces to 10 like from 13 uh, you know automatically it reduces to this one and if there are and slowly you know it penetrates and then this the corrosion starts and in carbon uh, carbonation is there then you also have the chloride say then uh, you know it is a very you know, uh, challenging thing the corrosion will initiate very fast actually okay so now these are some of the carbonation induced corrosions okay so like for example say so this is the original one so we call this as a carbonation depth actually how much depth you know this carbon dioxide has penetrated your the concrete you can see this is a carbonation depth we say so this is your original thin say so this uh, what have so we use that uh, you know phenaphthalene solution so when you spray on your the concrete you know if it is non carbonated it turns into a pink color actually and carbonated zone say it will be you know something like this okay the color will be you know in this uh, it will be like this color if there is non carbonated so it will be this one so this is used to find out in how much depth is it the carbonation has uh, happened also this corrosion process so this is how the carbonation also creates uh, you know this uh, corrosion and of course apart from this uh, you know the chloride and carbonation say of course this is more valid for uh, you know the chemical uh, the plants are given you know, the paper mills chemical industry and even in hospitals also when they store this medicine and other labs and you know chemistry labs and other things also when you are having inorganic acid you know alkaline solution salt solution say they may not induce corrosion but the cover you know it gets uh, spoiled actually okay the cement matrix goes away aggregates goes away and it also causes this type of uh, failures itself and this is also the one you know the curling basically so which we have seen in uh, very soil so you know like you see And whenever you are having a slab, say the temperature difference, okay, the so temperature, uh, you know, the gradient as well as the moisture, say. So what happens is the slabs, the top surface, and other things also they try to curl basically, okay. So this also we have seen in various, uh, you know, because of temperature difference also, you will see these type of uh, phenomena also. Then this is also one more temperature, you know. So like you see the top temperature, bottom temperature, there is a huge difference, say. we all know right that the coefficient of concrete is uh, you know this is 5 into 10 to the power of minus 6 or whatever so a change of uh, you know 100 degrees fahrenheit say will change the overall length by you know 78 uh, you see the inches itself okay so this is at 22 you know the mm so this is a change so this is also one more change one more uh, important thing which we have seen in uh, orissa okay one is a corrosion was this one curling we have seen then the temperature and the moisture uh, differences also so this also is there like is a diurnal solar heating say so generally in orissa what happens is most of the hospitals you know because sunstroke is there so they use this uh, ac rooms actually okay so the inside it will be full of uh, you know the temperature will be small but outside the temperature so there is a huge difference say so that also and it will be you know on for so many years you could do this one so what happens is the cantilever you know you will see these type of uh, cracks in the columns uh, you know the slabs and other things also which are coming due to the temperature uh, difference also then there is a fire also so some hospitals uh, you know what we have seen in orissa you know the some one, one very rare actually not all of them one or two were subjected to even uh, fire also and nowadays you are seeing in the news also many structures you know they are getting damaged due to fire so what happens is whenever there is a fire say if there is you can see the huge temperature difference 1000 degrees fahrenheit surface is 120 degrees fahrenheit say 
So what happens is you will see these type of uh, spalling actually. As the time increases, say one hour uh, it happens means, you know, so this is a concrete cover goes away, then the steel also got exposed and the steel, uh, you, know, it, you know, it will have excess uh, cracking will be there, it melts, you know, so automatically at 120 minutes, say, you know, automatically, you know, the, this steel gets damaged and you know, the connection goes away and the structure, you know, the collapse also. So this is also, fire is also one more very important thing, which, uh, you know, uh, you know, which is very and to repair these type of structures is a very big, uh, you know, the challenge. And now, so now corrosion I have shown you, the temperature differences also will create problems. Then the fire is also one thing. Then the loads also basically, okay, the service load, whatever loads are there. So sometimes our structures will be subjected to impacts, you know, like if we're having the pillars in a bridge, it may get impacted due to some uh, vehicles or whatever, then earthquakes are there. You know, so these also you know, will create uh, problems for our uh, structures itself okay so it is a one simple thing which i think most of you in your undergraduate maybe you would have done the lab or whatever you have seen a clock cracks actually okay so you generally we know right so if you're having a simply supported beam we put the tension is here compression is stopped tension is at the bottom so there we will put steel so what happens is once the structure is loaded say so the reinforced bar will take the tension but what happens when the reinforcing bars are subjected to tension, they stretch actually. The concrete which is surrounding this uh, reinforcing bar, you know, it also will be subjected to tension. And if it exceeds the tensile strength, say, you will see these type of uh, cracks. It's what they call generally, you know, the flexural cracks also, okay? So these how generally, you know, if you do beam testing, you know, in the lab, most of you would have done, you will see these type of flexural cracks also. So these are also very common uh, cracks, you know, which we have seen in very uh, many you know, beams and uh, a slab and other things also. Then you can have shear cracks, you know, then you can have a combination of shear plus flexure. So these all these, of course, these things are all caused by the uh, load section. Okay, so the loading of the, not due to corrosion or whatever. So this crack is basically due to the uh, loads which is coming on the structure. So then whenever you are having, say, at the joints, essential, the beam column joints or whatever, the connections are there, you will see these type of diagonal uh, shear cracks actually, okay? So whenever there is an earthquake or wind forces, uh, like in Orissa, we have a huge uh, wind also. So you can see these type of uh, cracks also. So this also, of course, uh, you know, the one temperature also is one thing, uh, post-tension forces and then foundation movements by settlement of earth. So this also one can see in our uh, structures also. So these are the, you know, so these type of problems comes due to the load sector. So now, as already I told you, in the repair strategies, yes, the first thing starts is effect. So once you start seeing this uh, visual inspection, then you will do this one. So you have to identify the cause actually. So what has caused that one? So the crack, whatever you are seeing, so whether it is due to corrosion or that corrosion means it comes under exposure or whether it is due to the applied loads or whether it is due to some other thing. So this has to be identified the first actual cause. Now, after this, you know, whether you have to go to repair or protect, so these are more important, like public safety, you know, so you, and if you say repair strategy has to be, you know, if you want to repair the structure, so next step, what it happens is you have to evaluate actual, okay, that is you have to do the test and then, you know, you have to find out how much crack, what is the crack depth and you have to evaluate whether repair strategy and finally say, you go to do this analysis, you know, and then you do this repair useful life, all those things have to be, you know, taken care into consideration. So I have shown you the effects and the causes we have seen, what could be the possible causes. There are many, but I have shown you a few uh, causes itself. Now we will see how do we evaluate a structure actually, okay? So a lot of uh, tests are there, like for example, the mechanical uh, things is there, okay? So the mechanical properties, like you say, the compressive strength, uh, you know, the, this one, then we have the quality of the concrete has to be evaluated, tensile strength, flexural strength, abrasion resistant, bond strength, so this comes under mechanical, okay? Then we have chemical things like, you know, the corrosion process, the carbonation depth. So this you have to find out if there is any alkyl aggregate reactions are there, the chloride content has to be estimated, then uniformity, air void. These are all advanced tests actually, okay? Water permeability, absorption, resistant deicing, then the cracks, you know, what test we have to do, service to deflection, movements, leakage, you know, temperature, etc. All these things have to be done. So these are what we call as evaluation. So now effect, you know, causes approximately, you know, then comes the evaluation and you can do evaluation and you can go back and you can change your cause also, okay? So there are a lot of tests that are available in the market actually, okay? So under all these tests, the motivation comes from our health itself. 
so nowadays we have the mri scan mri scan x ray you know lot of uh, non destructive testing tests have come into picture so all those things which are widely used in the you know which are used for our human body sir now they have been translated to concrete also so this is one uh, hammer test you know uh, very simple test we do like you just fit with the hammer if the sound uh, changes so you can see if there is any internal crack is just you can easily identify by the sound of the hammer also then chain drag sounding also we say we drag a chain and where the sound is changed you know we identify this uh, crack sound so these are one of the standard uh, you know the easy test one does in uh, practice also so then we have this half cell potential actually so this is a very famous uh, test you know we do for uh, corrosion okay <coughs> So it's a very simple test, you know. So you have these apparatus. So some copper sulfate solution or will be there. So one end will be connected to the steel rod because when during corrosion, say cathode anode gets formed, so electrons start uh, moving, you know. So this records the voltage actually, okay. And there is some chart will be there. If it is a 350 MB, so it says highly likely that corrosion. Then 200 to 350, say so corrosion is uncertain. So there are some charts are there by which you know you can easily find out whether the bar has the steel has corroded. Or how much you know the corrosion has happened so you can easily find out from the simple uh, test itself and then we have this echo testing also impact echo you know, so this test so these are all non-destructive testing actually okay. so what we try to do is you know you impact is here say okay so you just send some uh, you know impact it creates some kind of a waves and if there is any crack inside, you know, the materials automatically, you know, you record it, you amplify it, you will get a display actual, okay. So if it is uncracked medium, say, the signal will be different. If there is a crack, say, automatically, you know, the, these waves may not be able to pass. So from the signal, so you can easily identify what's the size of the crack and you can easily get the entire crack profile from this uh, test also. That's what we call as impact echo also. Then this is a very famous in you know, ultrasonic pulse velocity. You know, most of I think uh, some of you would have done also. So, like if you want to find out what are the internal cracks, so you put one, uh, you know, these uh, geophones or whatever, you put uh, these sensors here, and then you know you send this uh, sound waves actually. So if there is no crack set, so automatically sound waves they travel uh, sharp and of course they will be very fast, right? The velocity will be extremely high. But if there is a wide crack, so you will not be able to detect the signal as this side actually. So that means you know, there is a huge crack inside your material also. And of course, it goes to the steel faster. And of course, if there is a crack, so the sound waves, they will travel like this. And the travel time will be more and the velocity will be small actually. Okay? And if there are voids or micro cracks, so sign travels, you know, so the, the velocity will be decreased also. So narrow crack, you can easily find out from this UPV test. So if there is a crack set, the velocity, so there are some guidelines are there. So if the velocity is above 4.5, that means excellent. That means, you know, there are no cracks in the material or whatever. If it is 3.5 to 4.5, it is a good, medium, doubtful, you know, you can easily estimate from this uh, UPV testing, which is very simple and you can do for the columns, beams and other uh, things also. Then there is one more impact echo test, which I have already shown you. So you impact it. You record it and then you know you can easily find out the amplitude actually. So if it is uncracked, you will get something. And if it is a, if the cracks are there, you will see different uh, you know the responses. And you can take the Fourier transforms and you can do analysis and you can find out actually okay, how much uh, the crack depth and others where the crack is located. You can easily find it from this uh, test also. And these are much more advanced nowadays. You know we are also using that's a ground penetrating radar. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it is a ground penetrating radar. We say. So this is a very, you know, nowadays it has become very popular. Uh, it is available, uh, you know, this type of this method is used. It has several antennas. So you can easily find out, you know, uh, for the how much the, you know, what you, uh, how, whether the bars have been corroded, whether the cracks are there. You can easily find out even they are being used for pavements to find out soil also, 100 meter depth, you know, the antenna you can penetrate also, whatever is inside, say. So everything you can get from this uh, ground penetrating radar also. So this is one of the advanced things which you know one is using right now. Okay. So anyway, so like this, so many tests are there. X-ray, you know, so many tests are there. So there are some uh, guidelines are there. The code also says like it's a visual inspection actual. Okay. So how to do this one? Ultrasonic pulse velocity we use. Then echo test we use. Then impact uh, echo test we can find out. So a lot of defects you can get, you know, from these uh, tests itself. Then we have a sonic echo, impulse response, impedance logging, 
so many you know the details are there actually okay so many tests are available like now as already i told you whatever ct scan mri say even the ultrasonic whatever we are using for our health checkups you know the same things one is uh, you know you can use for our uh, concrete also like their by radiometry radiography you know the logging so these are all very advanced uh, tests are there now you can easily find out you see what is inside your uh, concrete actually so once you have done this one you know so this evaluation method all so what we do first step is visual inspection we do then some laboratory testing we do preliminary analysis we try to because as already i told you have to identify the cause this is the most important thing if you can identify the cause then you are uh, 90% of the problem is uh, solved you know? so this is the most challenging aspect so if it is not if you are not satisfied so you may do additional tests and then you know you go back additional field observation detailed analysis we try to do so if there is no further investigation requires that means you identified the you know this one then we go for the rehabilitation actually okay so what are the options are there and final report everything we try to do itself that is how you know we try to do this one so now this is how we try to repair okay most of you may be knowing uh, it is given nicely in the textbook also so in orissa say most of the slabs beams it is the situation is like this okay so there are nice uh, steps are there so you, you know how to remove this uh, deteriorated surface and then how to repair these uh, you know the coating of these bars are you may have to add a new bar and then finally you repair and make it uh, nicely you know it looks uh, something like this. so these are some of the steps actually so wherever you want to do the locate the areas say okay so hammer drag sounding or chain drag or even now uh, you can do this ultra pulse laser whatever this one so you find out this thing and first of all you have to design if you want to repair a slab or a beam set some uh, temporary support you put it here you remove the deteriorated uh, concrete set so there are variety of methods are there both are the aci codes are there so and you do all these things and then you know you prepare surface repair boundaries all the things you do and you can clean the surface of the exposed reinforcing steel and you clean you have to clean very nicely you know because it should not create another uh, headaches also and the bonding set because the concrete and this has to be strong so you clean all these things and then you repair your uh, you know the, and you finally you make it you know looking uh, something like this actually so it's a very uh, straightforward here and then uh, by, and here the most important problem is you know, if you don't do this repair uh, properly said you will i already told you the further repairs will come up actually so like for example if you have a crack say okay so the crack is coming from the top you know so simply you remove this portion and then if you do this uh, you know without even addressing the water leakage say okay without addressing properly the you know this one so finally you can see so this problem comes and you know your repair strategy itself it gets uh, failed actually so you have to be very careful in doing the repairs and of course the another most important headache is once you have done the repair when when you are doing the repair strategy the most important thing is the new concrete and the old concrete the old structure the new material how well they interact actually this is a very important aspect okay because it is a fresh material that is a very old material you know so how they interact like you know the shear bond tensile bond structural bond you know so these things also have to be taken into consideration we have to do analysis and we have to verify all this uh, details also so if you don't do these things properly say so like you are having a new concrete and these are old material say so the coefficient of thermal expansion if both of them are same say then it is like homogeneous only suppose if an is greater than a not or an less than a not so you will see the shear bond is uh, you know there will be a shear between these two it gets stressed actually and if the modulus of elasticity say if it is entirely different say then also we have a problem actually if this is more you know this becomes a brittle and you know you will see all this shear bond brittle metal may become over stressed also then drying shrinkage is also another headache for us if both are same there is no problem if one is greater you know automatically shear and other things gets dialed so this also one has to evaluate how the new material is going to interact with the old material also and if you don't consider these things properly you will see the loss of bond and your entire repair strategy itself you know it fails actually okay and of course this is what we said load carrying it does not carry the new material or the old material say so then if you have you know the local creep and other things becomes very important how uh, you know the interaction happens between these two materials itself and now regarding the repair strategies actually okay so there are lot of uh, methods are but if you want to repair any beam or existing column say so what we try to do is you know you can go for a composite construction or enlargement increasing the cross sectional dimensions you can do like this is an existing column here say okay so you can uh, you know you can enlarge it to the area of cross section such that you know it takes more load or 
or whatever rehabilitation or you can add some more uh, you know the steel structural shapes is there, okay the poison to this one and then you can increase this beam for the joints and other uh, things also and then there are so many techniques are there you know post tensioning you can do to strengthen this one then uh, you, know, you can have external or you can have internal this one and if you want to reduce the stress reduction say you can break it and you can create a joint relief joints they say okay so all these methods are available for the repair uh, strategies after identifying the cause and you have evaluated everything is done so these methodologies are also available and and then grouting basically okay most of you may be knowing internal grouting external grouting also we undertake you know, to repair this uh, cracks even we have done even for the versus uh, these the health facilities also then uh, beam strengthening so you know passive strengthening is there active strengthening is there so passive means you add a steel plate and when the load comes only live load comes only you know it becomes active otherwise uh, you know, it will share the tension this itself this active strengthening means you are dying, doing some uh, you know uh, you know the pre stressing or process or post tensioning or what the pre tension the steel rod is incorporated so it is something like active uh, strengthening immediately you know it allows the beams to carry the uh, loads on so it depends you know which one you have to use what is that you, you can do it also then when it comes to the columns you say generally when you are doing earthquakes okay so when you are designing for earthquakes, you see like some of the old buildings, you know, so and if it is located in Gauhati or you know our Himalaya, say. So nowadays, what people are doing is, you know, these are these they remove this cross section of the column and they will put a bearing actually, the new isolation bearing, you know. And so whenever there is an earthquake, you know, so automatically it happens and the you know the structure there will be no collapse of the structure. You can see there is a bearing here also, you know. So this is a column. So it is resting on a bearing actually. So the old columns also, you know, sometimes the people are cutting and then you know, we do this type of analysis also. And these are some of the methods which are used to repair the columns. You know, the new columns, say, you just uh, increase the section size, you can have, uh, you can add the existing one, the new one say, you put and then you join them by uh, you know, these uh, uh, steel rods or whatever. Then you can have you know, the column and the enlargement, method A, method B, they say. The existing one is here. The new one is uh, this side, or you can have existing in all the four sides. Say you just uh, you know, increase the section enlargement also. Then this is how for beams and slabs. Say you increase you know the new concrete structural member, or you can add you know, the enlargement here, or you can put external bond reinforcement, or post tensioning, you know supplementary support, or span shortening. So these are variety of techniques that are there. Once you identified the cause. Once you've identified all the evaluation, this one, so you can use any of this uh, matter. And then confinement strengthening also. If you have a column set, you can strengthen the existing. This is widely used in uh, earthquake damages, actually. So columns which get damaged due to earthquakes, you know, you do this confinement strengthening. So existing, uh, this one set. So you, you know, of course, here also you can have active or a passive, you know, they do these type of uh, things also. So like this is one example, you see. So this is a column so which has got damaged here, actually, okay? So complete uh, it got concrete got crashed reinforcement also due to an earthquake. So you can see the repair strategy. So you nicely clean all the things and then you do the grouting here and then you know you add this uh, plate and then you know you put this pre-stressing uh, thing itself and here's a column basically you know, which has been repaired with this uh, plate. Now it is ready to take you know the load which is coming on this uh, column also.